Joaquin McCoy. I'm uh, plaintiff's lead counsel in the case entitled Burns versus uh, the state of California, challenging Article 1, Section 7.5 of the state constitution, denying gays and lesbians the right to marry. I created the Burns complaint to also to challenge the Strauss versus Horton decision, uh, creating separate but unequal institutions of civil unions in California. Now, I am humble to come here to speak to you about uh, me coming from Tatum, Texas, uh, and arguing before the California Supreme Court. Now, Tatum is a small town. It's a town of 1,500 people. There are no hotels or motels in Tatum. There is a Dairy Queen in Tatum. There is one stoplight in Tatum. And most people in Tatum wear cowboy boots, Wrangler pants, and cowboy hats. And when I grew up in Tatum, I thought everybody in the world were either black, white, or Mexican. I didn't know that there were any gay people in the world until I moved to San Francisco. <laughs> and I learned that gays have either been sexually abused, emotionally abused, or mentally abused. And I experienced two out of, of the three. I was emotionally abused and physically abused when I grew up in Tatum. My father, who didn't graduate from the eighth grade, who cannot read or write, intercepted a telephone call from a person that I met at this club called the Rainbow Connection in Longview, Texas, which is a town over from Tatum. Uh, my father never answers the phone. And on this particular weekend, he answered two of the calls made by this guy named Tom. And Tom told my father that he wanted to take me out to the movies, that he missed me at the club. And at the end of the conversation, my father asked him what his phone number was. So at that time, Tom realized that he had not been talking to me. So when I got home, my father asked me who Tom was. He was sitting there in the chair. His eyes were beet red. And I told him, well, Tom was someone who was getting me a job at Tom Thom Page, which is a grocery store uh, in the nearest town over from Tatum. Well, he knew I had lied to him. And he began to beat me. He put his boot on my chest, and he stomped me in my chest several times. He grabbed a coat rack, and he hit me with it. And he pulled off his belt, and he whipped me in the face, and he also whipped me in my legs, on my legs, and I had shorts on at the time. I got away from him by going outside. He came outside and went toward his truck. He had a gun rack with a gun in his truck. And I was fearful of him, so I ran back in the house, and he uh, came into the house, and he got a broom. And he broke, my broke the broom over my legs. And as he was beating me, he said, gays do not amount to anything. He kept saying, gays do not amount to anything. And he kept pointing toward the club, which was south of where he lived. And then the next couple of days, he said he wanted to go riding with me in my car. And so he did. But I wasn't going to take him to the Rainbow Connection. I took him to a friend's house, a girlfriend of mine, and he sat out in the car for three hours on several occasions. And then I left Tatum, and I came to California. And I went to college and graduated at San Francisco State University. And then I went on to the University of California at Hastings College of the Law. But I was destined to make sure that I helped people whose, whose rights were violated. And when uh, I graduated from Hastings College of the Law, I started my own civil rights law firm. And it's been in operations for 16 years. And I help all types of people, black, white, straight, gay, the elderly. And in the year of 2000, I tried a case 
where the jury came back with a large award of $132 million for racial discrimination in the workplace. In that same year, in 2000, the Honorable Mayor Willie Brown proclaimed Joaquin McCoy Day, September 1st, 2000. Two years later, Mayor Brown also appointed me to the San Francisco Ethics Commission, where I uh, was commissioned for four years, and I was vice chair at the end of uh, the fourth year. I've been able to meet uh, people like Johnny Cochran in practicing law. I also met the president, President uh, Bill Clinton. But the thing that I liked most, liked most about practicing law is that I was able to uh, handle two precedent-setting cases, one in which one of my clients' boyfriend didn't tell him he was HIV positive. And we sued him, and it was a controversial case, but the court ruled that, there, uh, that he should have disclosed his HIV status to his partner. And the other case that I worked on that was uh, pretty amazing was the in Ray marriage cases, where I argued before the California Supreme Court in March of 2008. And of course, in June of 2008, the court agreed with us that gays and lesbians should have the right to be married. And of course, in November, Prop 8 came and took the rights away from gays and lesbians. And so the Burns case, which is the case that I have now, is challenging the Strauss case, which upheld Prop 8, because the, the Strauss case essentially designated heterosexual, a marriage for heterosexuals and domestic partnerships for homosexuals. And the, Br the Burns case is, uh, we've coined it, the, the Brown versus Board of Education for Gay Rights, because we're challenging the separate and unequal doctrine. Now you wonder what happened to my father in Tatum. Well, a couple years ago, I went back to Tatum. I took a limousine and I picked up my sister and my sister wanted to see my grandfather. And my grandfather met us at a location and wanted us then to go see our father. We went to go see my father. Well, I, we, we pulled up in my father's uh, front yard in, our, in the limousine. And my father, my grandfather wanted me to see him and my father comes in, uh, comes driving in the truck in a big dump truck. And he gets out of the dump truck and uh, we're standing there. I'm sorry. Essentially, My father didn't recognize me. And I told him that well, I actually came down to Tatum at that time to go to a uh, high school reunion. And he wanted to go with me. So he um, goes into his he goes into his house and he puts on his Wrangler boots, his Wrangler pants and his cowboy boots and his hat. And he goes to Tatum family, the high school reunion. and he sees people embracing me. And I, I gave a talk to the class, and my father was there, and my sister was there. My father leaned over to my sister and, and said, do you know that I beat him? And my sister said, yes, I know you beat him. 
And my sister, my father leaned over uh, to my sister again and said, I regret beating him. And my sister said that he should, uh, he should tell me, but he never did. And he never had to. Because uh, I'm now trying to help people protect their, their, their civil rights. Thank you.